Hello and welcome to Security Management 201. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to be talking about how to structure your security policy in a segmented network. If you recall one of the previous segments we talked about uh, segmenting your network and using security zoning as a way to think about how to structure your policy. So today we're going to be looking at uh, one aspect of such a, an organization of your security policies um, to future-proof your work against uh, uh, additional upcoming changes. So let's start with an example and uh, we'll see what I mean. Suppose you have a network that's uh, segmented uh, into three segments. You have your orange zone over here, then you have uh, the core network in brown in the middle, and you have the blue zone on the right. Um, and there are firewalls protecting all of these zones from each other. So there's a, a firewall protecting the orange zone, there's a couple of firewalls protecting the core network, and there's a blue firewall protecting the blue zone. Now with this in mind, um, you have a new change request to deal with. Uh, there is a need for the VMware administrator to connect from his administration workstation over here in the orange zone to the ESX server over there in the blue zone with this IP address dot three at the end. Uh, and as firewall administrator, you need to allow this traffic through from end to end. So you consult with, a net with your network diagram and you realize that you need to modify all four firewalls on this path, the orange one, the two brown ones, and the blue one, <coughs> to allow this requested traffic. At this point, I suggest to stop and think for a second how you want to write these rules in these uh, four policies that you have to update. So what I'd like to suggest is to think about these uh, policies um, in a sort of diamond shape like this sketch over here where it's sharp near the source, it's sharp near the destination, and it's broad in the middle. And if you think about the way you want to organize your, po your whole policies in this way, um, you might save yourself work in the future. Specifically, when you're close to the source, so you're over here in the orange firewall that's right next to the source, you can be very specific regarding the source, so you just list the IP address of the administration works, uh, workstation, so just that one IP address. But in terms of destination, you're very far away from the blue zone in the terms of the destination. So you can just write the whole subnet here. So 172.1.1.0 slash 24. So allowing traffic to exit just from that one administration system, but it, might, it can go to anywhere in the blue zone uh, with a VMware service. So that's the starting point of the diamond. If you look at the other side, at the blue firewall protecting the blue zone, here you're very close to the destination, so you should be specific with regards to the destination. So just allow that one destination. But you're quite far away from the source, so you can allow all traffic from the whole orange zone, so 10.3.0.0 slash 16 in terms of source. And now when you have to look at the intermediate firewalls protecting the core network, so they're not close to the administration, to the orange zone, and they're not close to the blue zone either, they're in the fat middle. Over here you don't want to put specific rules, you want to put broad rules uh, just with zone to zone traffic. So you'd put the whole source zone 1030.0/16 and the whole blue zone was 172.1.1.0/24. Now, notice that by writing the rules in this way, I have not introduced any traffic that wasn't specifically requested. So I'm following the least privilege principle uh, because any traffic uh, using this uh, VMware service um, going between any other combination of IP addresses is going to be blocked somewhere, either by the orange zone firewall when it tries to exit the orange zone, or by one of the core firewalls if it's coming from the wrong direction, or by the blue firewall if it's trying to get into the blue zone but not going to specifically do that IP address. So traffic that wasn't specifically requested is not being allowed by the combination of all these rules. Um, but what I've done by introducing uh, wider objects in the source and the destination in the intermediate steps and just having one side of the rule being very specific at the points is that if 
in the upcoming weeks you will receive additional change requests that are variations of this one so maybe from that same administration station uh, the administrators would need to get to other servers in the uh, blue zone or maybe there are um, other administration workstations that need to get to that same system in those upcoming change requests should they occur you might not need to touch the firewalls in the core at all and maybe you'll just need to touch one uh, firewall either near the destination or near the source so you're future proofing your policy uh, and saving yourself uh, potential work in upcoming change requests without giving up any security for the immediate change request that you have to deal with right now so to conclude think about in, a, in the multi-zoned segmented network with multiple firewalls think about your firewall policies as a whole across your whole estate in this using this diamond shaped metaphor where you're specific at the points and broad in the middle if you do that you'll have a more structured policy and you'll have to work less with upcoming change requests and in general you'll be able to do more with your limited time so thank you very much for your attention and see you next time